everybody. It is Corey Poirier, and I'm excited to be back with the latest edition of our show. Excited to have a, uh, I won't say a first time guest, we've had him before, but excited to have a, a really cool guest on the show. Somebody I've been on his show. He's doing big things in the world, most notably recently uh, releasing a book. And so James Miller of Lifeology, first of all, thank you for joining us. And secondly, can you, I always do this, James, I'm different than a lot of hosts. I don't read a bio. I usually ask the guests to tell us a little bit about themselves. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself for those that may be discovering you for the first time today before we dive in further? Perfect. Corey, once again, thank you so much for being, allowing me to be a guest on your show. I'm truly humbled. Yes, as you know, James Miller, I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I've been in the mental health space for 25 years. I am a classically trained composer. I'm now an, an author, but I'm most known for my national radio show, which is called Lifeology Radio. So I'm on three times a week. We have 400 episodes. You have to get to interview fantastic people like yourself. And so I get to learn and grow and develop and level up with everybody else and all my listeners as well. So that is who I am in a nutshell. Amazing. Well, you know, James, one direction I want to go first before I talk to you, of course, about, as I mentioned, uh, your new book is I don't, I don't get to ask this often from people that have interviewed in the neighborhood of the amount of people I've interviewed. And so I'd love to ask you first and foremost, uh, can you tell us what is, if it comes to mind, what is perhaps one of the most memorable interviews you've done? And, and uh, also, is that tie into maybe one of the best life lessons you've done? Or do either yes. of those, or both of those come to mind? That's what should I say was your interview? <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> just like, like. No, honestly, before before I was a national, before I went to the radio, I, I started uh, as a podcast. And so I think like my seventh episode, I interviewed Mildred D. Muhammad. She was the ex-wife of the DC sniper back in 2006. And so the whole concept, the whole show is about resilience. And I was literally blown away. This woman went through so many things. And I learned so much backstory. So for those of you who don't remember, in 2006, there was a person um, who was in the trunk of a car and he would drive around and he would shoot people. And I believe there are six people that were shot initially and they were eventually caught. But what it turns out that most people don't know is he was not randomly shooting those people. I mean, unfortunately they were random, but he was trying to shoot a lot of people and she was supposed to be one of the people that he shot so he could get custody of their kids. She was a witness protection from uh, from everything because he was a lot of, unfortunately, domestic violence, et cetera. And so she was separated from him, he was trying to find her and that was his goal to do that. And so her whole story, Corey, was, it was so inspiring. I she had, In a lot of ways, it was, it was hard to hear because people in my space, the mental health space, they would try and help her, but then they'd try and get book deals from it. And they just really exploited her. All the different people in her life just exploited her. And this woman is probably one of the most inspiring people I've ever, and I'm still inspired by her, of course. But I remember she told me that she never spoke negatively about um, her. She had two boys about, her. she never spoke negatively about their father to her, to them, because that was their father. And so she had all of her different thoughts, but she was always kind and respectful about him to, to her children. But she said she would go, alone by herself during the day and she would just scream and yell and get all that energy out but then when she would come home to her kids the kids didn't know and i was just so blown away here i'm like oh let me do my little show and my inspirational show and here she is like this powerhouse of a woman and so on my tv show coming up she, I, she's definitely going to be on my show but if anyone can research her look her up mildred d muhammad one of the most inspiring women you will ever meet and so yes i appreciate you asking that question because that i love telling that story because she's just so so impactful to me now Having said that, you, you brought up another thing I wanted to ask about, which is the show, because I know we talked about it a while back. So how close is it now, the show itself to coming to life? Actually, there's quite a few things that have changed. I, I'll have to tell you off um, off the offline okay. here, but some, some really good things have happened. Some actually really exciting things have happened. It's like you've gone a different direction, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to telling you this off camera. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's talk about that more. Uh, so uh, I guess the other question I had before, again, I dive into the book side, yeah is and i was going to ask what made you decide to write a book but i want to ask you one step further than that behind to get to there which is are you a book reader yourself and and i'm asking this question james because i know sometimes I think well what a fool, foolish question if somebody wrote a book but i know lots of people that don't read books may listen to audiobooks or what have you but also write books so are you a book reader and if you if you are is there a book that you usually recommend to people Great question. Yes. Ever since I was a little boy, I have, I read every sci-fi fantasy book you can read. In fact, I was telling you, I have like my, <laughs> I had 10 minutes before I was in those calls. So I was like, let me read really fast. So I'm reading a cheesy little book right now because as you know, we're so busy. So for me to read something that is, um, 
that's fantastical in some ways. It helps me just compartmentalize my mind. But I'm actually reading a new book. One of my friends, Jessica Baum, she is um, wrote this new book called Ang Anxiously Attached. And it actually comes out the same day my book does, June 14th of 2020. So I'm sure there's a show will syndicate so you can find her book as well. It's actually a really good book. So I got the pre-sales from it. They, they sent it to me as since I'm a broadcaster. And it's really good. I mean, this book talks about people who have anxious attachments and relationships, how that plays out and how to heal yourself from that. And so I have really enjoyed reading this book. I was, I, I'm not anxiously attached, but I was reading it and I was like, oh, I could see how I could be anxiously attached. So it was an interesting concept, but yeah, that, that's a book I'm reading right now. The actual real book I'm reading right now, I uh, highly endorse that. So if anyone wants to learn more about that, it's called Anxiously Attached by Jessica Baum that will be available on Amazon and every other platform you can think of as of June 14th. Amazing. Well, let's dive into your book. And I, I told you off air about a, uh, a, a new podcast we have in the works. Mm -hmm. And if you're cool with it, at the end, I was just thinking as you were saying that about Jessica's, um, we're talking about books that I might ask you the questions that we're going to ask once we do the show and maybe that okay. can make its way onto the new podcast. Uh, sure, okay. But before we jump ahead of that, James, tell us about the new book. And again, what was the catalyst or inspiration behind you deciding that you wanted to finally release this new book? Thank you. Well, the book is called Life Lessons. You are the experts on your life, and it's a workbook. The reason why I created this book is there are thousands of fantastic books out there, and I've read so many of them, and I've been inspired by so many of them. But what I haven't found, and I'm sure there's some out there, but I haven't found them, is I haven't found a book that tells you what to do in the moment. So my book is specifically broken into nine different chapters. And so when someone's struggling for anything in life, it gives them a framework of saying, okay, let me reframe the situation. But what's different about it is the reason why you are the expert is it help you focus on what, what you've done before that's similar. Let me say that again. So the, the situation may be different, but the emotions you're experiencing are the same. So if I went through grief, let's say heartache or the loss of somebody, grief is grief. And so if I'm struggling in the moment, I don't know how to tackle something, I can say, well, when did I feel grief before? All right, well, I felt grief when this person passed away or when this person left. What did I do that was healthy for me that worked? And what did I do that was not healthy for me? Because sometimes when we become so overwhelmed in the moment, we don't realize we actually have a choice or we've been here before. So the recognition of I've been in this place before, I've experienced this emotion before, let me remember what I did. Let me implement that now. So you implement the new st or the strategy they did before, and then they read the, the chapters and the chapter kind of reframes the situ situation for them to help them kind of reframe and relaunch and be able to move through their day. Amazing. Well, and. And, you know, I love that you've taken a different approach because of the fact that um, there are, as you said, there's so many books uh, in that area mm -hmm. and to actually have a book that's, um, you know, I guess, given people something that maybe there's not as much of. And, sure. this, and, and I also love the workbook side of it because so many people, um, you know, I find can gain so much from the mm -hmm. exercises and workbooks. And in fact, um, one of my books called the book of why at the end of almost every chapter, oh, really? yeah. there's a, there's an exercise. And I will say to uh, James that we got probably as much positive feedback on putting the exercises in the book as we did the book. It's doing the book itself. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great. Cause you can get a win. So just like your workbook, you can get a, an actual uh, tangible win that you can see, you know, you fill it yes. the exercise and if it says do this or try this or what have you, when you do that and have success, you've gotten a win from the book. And I don't, exactly. it's, it's hard to do that from a traditional book. If there's no, nothing to write in, there's no space to write it. Correct. And exactly. So at the end of each chapter, and once again, the chapters are very short because I know when I'm struggling and I'm like everybody else, I struggle. So if I'm, if, <laughs> if I'm struggling to do something, I'm like, crap, I don't have like an hour to read, you know, however many chapters it's simply three to four pages long. And there's really short chapters. It gives you a really good frame framework gives you enough information to give you just what you need to implement the old strategies um, and then to reframe it and then to be able to exercise that and actualize it so when you can actualize it like you said you have that win like oh I've, I've done this before let me do that again and that is a really good way for people to crystallize the learning and to be the successful person that they are I love it now let me ask you because there are exercises and things you can fill out uh, I mean, I can, I can make assumptions, which I shouldn't, but uh, I'm thinking that you probably, it's a print book, but is this going to be a, like a, um, let's say a fillable PDF or Kindle, or like, is there going to be a way a person can do it digitally and fill it out? Or is it more so uh, just the print that you can fill out? You know, that's a great question. I, when I created the book, um, I, I, I wasn't really sure how to do that. So I, it's, it's a hardback paperback. And it's also a digital book. So what I, I had all the lines there for people to fill out, because I know you can put notes in there and you can do it that way. Like on my Kindle, I, I, or the Kindle app, I can do that. But I thought, well, when it comes to, and I was more of just the aesthetics aspect of it. 
So I thought, well, if they change the font size, it's going to look all weird. So I remove that from the aesthetic version, but maybe I'll put it back because that is something that people can put, you know, they can put the annotations in there and they can write the notes. So maybe that's a possibility. But what I did for the digital version is I, well, I just took out the lines, but they have the questions there, of course. And so people are going to take their own piece of paper and write it down. But unfortunately, to my knowledge anyway, and I'll have to talk with my editor about that, I wasn't sure if there's a way to do that where it can be a fillable aspect in the Kindle or in any, in any of the other electronic formats. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I'd love to, um, you know, pretend I know the answer to that. I will say <laughs> that uh, even when I asked that, I was like, I'm curious, can that be done? But uh, I know that you can do, I know there is fillable PDFs. I know there is fillable forms and stuff you can do. I just yeah, know sure. how it sure. works when you're putting together a full book. So I that's mean, a great, that's a great question. I'll have to ask about that because I don't know that answer. Well, it'd be good to know, like if that'd be powerful to have that. So, oh, totally. Uh, and I'm sure somebody's come up with that question long, long before us. So if they do have it, let me know as well. I'd love to know. Uh, but I do know so there's an annotation on there. So I know like um, on the electronic book, if you push your, hold your finger to the, uh, to the word, it pops up and you can put notes in there. So you can, you can do it that way if you want, but there's, it's, it's a slightly different workaround, but I'm not sure about the, the other aspect that you're talking about. Hmm. Okay. I, I'm curious to find out. Uh, now having, I guess, as far as the book itself, what, from your perspective, what would you love to see people say they got from your book? Like, what is, what is the, what do you see it as if you were the reader, if you put yourself in that shoes, what do you hope they walk away and say, this book did this for me, or this book was this? Like, I just love to get your take on what your ultimate goal would be for somebody to walk away from the book. That's a great question. A lot of it is empowerment. I just want people to know I've been here before. I don't need anyone else per se. I can I have the answers already within myself. Uh, life is, as we know, life is trial and error in so many different ways. And so if we are struggling with something, when you reflect on what you've done before that worked for you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You already know what to do. You do that and you'll find that you will be the successful person you want. So it basically boils down to empowerment and just know that there's hope. There's always hope in everything we experience. And now how much, I guess the other side to this is how much did the show your show play into the content in the book, meaning the knowledge you've acquired, the interviews you've yeah. done, like how big a part did that play in what you're sharing in the book? You know, that's, a, that's another really good question. When I started Lifeology back in 2015, for six months, every single day, I, I did a YouTube episode. And so it was a work on my craft. And I, you know, I, it wasn't, if people watched it, great, but I wanted to do it because this is where I wanted to be. I envisioned where I wanted to be as I started it. And so I just practiced and practiced and thankfully I got to where I am. But so every single day when I did a three minute video, it was a life lesson. And so what I was going through, because it was a huge transition for me, I closed my practice in DC, came down to Florida and I was like, I, I just, I want to do this. And so I didn't really know how it was going to play out, but I just said, okay, well, at least I've done a lot of film and television. When I was younger. I interviewed my patients for years. So I have something. So as I practiced that and I listed all the people around me and I also with myself, like, what am I learning about myself? And that's actually one of the, one of the chapters of my book is what's the lesson. And that if you ask that yourself, that question all the time, what am I learning about myself? That is such a very empowering question. So to answer your question, I did so many of those. And so when I, for the YouTube portion of it, I think I have about 185, those three minute little lessons, just like it's in the book. And then for the podcast and then for radio, half of the radio shows I have, I'm at 400 episodes now, probably about 200 of those have those three little, three little minute um, episodes as well, a little scenario. So all of this has just been a culmination of that. And so this is another version of that in a book format of taking everything that my brand has done and consolidating into this, this book here. So everything I've learned from everybody around me, I've been able to actualize and actually implement, my own, implement in my own life. And that's how this book came about. And now, again, this is, I'm, I'm jumping back and forth, James, between the show and the book. But mm -hmm. when it comes to the show, one of the questions that I get all the time, so I'm going to pose this question to you, because these yeah. are the things I get asked a lot, and I don't get to ask somebody else who's done sure. a large amount of interviews these questions. So I, I like to pose them because I want to hear the different answers. But as far as interviews that you've done, uh, I'm sure you get asked this often, but how do you secure the big name interviews. Like, so people always ask me, how did you get the so-and-so in your show? How can you get so-and-so in your show? Is it the way that you pitched them originally? Is it because it came from a referral from somebody else? Is it the number of listenerships you, listenership you have on the show, which is obviously a great listenership and it's syndicated? Like, I'm just curious how you find most of the big guests end up finding the radio show. Honestly, I have been incredibly blessed. Like obviously I've, you've, you've introduced me to so many wonderful people. So thank you so much. In other ways though, I, I've been, I don't know how do I say this? I have been blessed to just people 
figure out who I am. And, and I think I actually talked about this last time around there. I am on this association is one of the biggest PR lists ever. And so I was put on the decision list um, God, back in 2016. And from there, everything just blew up for me. Like t- I have, I have so many different email accounts, but I get at least a hundred pitches a day uh, to be on my show. Well-known people, not so well-known people. And, and I've just been blessed to do that. So I don't actually reach out to anybody. I just get constantly pitched over and over and over again. And then of course, working with a lot of PR firms, they know who I am. So they just send me all their, their clients. And so that's how it's happened. When I first started on radio in 2015, excuse me, 2016, um, I went through, there was one website I went to that I got some people. And then from there, when I was on that decision list, all of a sudden everything just blew up for me. And, and I, I haven't had to reach out to anyone and I've been very blessed and humbled by that, but that's what's happened for me. So it's, it's been, you know, as we know, the more work you put into something, the more you get something back. And so I just thought, well, let me just create my craft and be the best that I can be with that. And I've been blessed to have that many responses a day. So it's been really humbling. Amazing. Well, I know what you're talking about because I definitely likewise get pitched every day and it's it's pretty crazy. And the, the wild uh-huh. part is how many of those pitches, uh, there are some pitches where it's so long, but the, and it doesn't get really to the point of who the guest is that yes. sometimes we get busy and those get missed. And, and I feel bad yes, that, sure. that much time into writing that. Now I know they're blasting yes. it out to a lot of different podcasters, but at the same time, yeah, it's interesting how many pitches come in. And then at the same time, how you'll get introduced to somebody else through somebody, you know, and they'll mm-hmm. jump over that list. You know, you yeah, exactly. that. It does no, it's true. No, but it's true. All the time. I mean, you're right about the pitches. I, I, uh, for with my PR team, I will, they send it to me and then, or my, the the PR people send it to me and then I will send it off to my PR team to take care of the, the, the scheduling. But I will send it off to my, my publicist and I'm like, obviously he's very good at what he does, but I'm like, this is the worst pitch ever because like you said, and respectfully, a lot of hard work goes in there. But when, as a, as a reporter, as a broadcaster, I only have a few minutes to look at something. If it doesn't catch my eye within the first, the first paragraph or first however many sentences, I don't have time to read that. And I say that respectfully, but everyone can, we can all improve in our craft quicker you get to something, the better. And I have this one company I work with. They have the who, what, when, why, and just like that, it's really concise. They, I don't even have to, I don't really read, I mean, I read them, but I'm like, I already know what I wanted because they, I can tell right away what it is. And it's so fast and so concise. And I have a great working relationship with them. And, and for me, it's the, if you could tell me right away what it is, you know, that elevator speech or that just something catch my eye. Don't have all these flowery words like the more flowery, the f- more flowery the pitch is, the more I'm not going to read it. Because to me, that that's respectfully, that sounds like fluff to me and there's no meat there. So tell me what it is. Tell me why you want it. Why why they'd be a good fit for my show. Just make it queen, clean and concise. So I don't know how your what your process is, but for me, that's what happens. And so a lot of times people, unfortunately, it, don't have enough time to look at all that. So I will look at the people that uh, that, that where the pitch is written really well. Well, I'll, you know, I'll say to that, I mean, I have a similar approach and uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just take two seconds because I want to make sure we come That's back fine, yeah. to you for a second. Oh, too, fine, but, yeah. um, but, you know, I'll tell you, I had, I won't say who the publisher was. I'll tell you maybe off air. Uh, I've said it publicly, but I just won't say it on the show right now. That's but right. Um, I had somebody pitch, Stedman Graham, and, mm-hmm. and the guy who wrote the book of awesome. And both of those people I would love to have yeah. on the show. But I had Jordan Harbinger. You probably know who Jordan Harbinger mm-hmm. is from the Art of Charm and the Jordan yeah. Harbinger show mm-hmm. on. And Jordan said, don't bury the lead when you're pitching me. And what he meant by that is he's exactly. looking for somebody who's been in a, a let's say a gang underground or undercover in a gang versus somebody that's a big, a big coach. And so he's saying like, don't pitch mm-hmm. me at your coach, pitch me that you're in an undercover gang. I'll get you on the exactly. show. And then I'll let you pitch that you're a coach on the show. Exactly. But, Exactly. Don't bury the lead is what he said. Figure out what, what the show wants and pitch to that. And so the example I have is I get this uh, this uh, publisher sent me an email pitching Stedman Graham and it was his new book was out, but it was just like, how would you like to have so somebody who's done this? And that was the pitch. And we, we got busy. We never read it. And then later on discovered it. And it was like 10 paragraphs down. Uh, oh I'd love to have Stedman on your show. I'm like, that's the lead. You could have just said <laughs> in the subject, you could have said, do you want to have Stedman Graham on your show? Would have been a yes or no, yes. done, move on. Yes. And we wow. ended up yeah. Stedman on through his publicist later because she ended up, I shared that story so much, she heard it and said, do you want me to get Stedman on your show? But my point is <laughs> they buried the lead. That's all they would have had to say. So yeah, again, that's all. I totally get it. Yes. So that I agree with you on that. So um, I will say in passing, uh, one guest you've had on, it's the one guest that's escaped me that I still want to get on the show that you've had on. And I know he doesn't do as many interviews anymore. Uh, so it gets harder and harder is Don Miguel Ruiz senior. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, 
So I've interviewed yeah, I can, both I can, sons I can, multiple times. Oh, yeah, okay. But I haven't interviewed the father yet. And and I know he's doing less and less interviews. So my timeline is diminishing, but I'm impressed yeah. that you met him on the That's show. actually how, that's how I met you actually. Yeah, because you you saw his interview with me. And I think that's what you said. You reached out to me because of him. So that's, so thank you, Dad Miguel, if you're watching this, really appreciate it. And he was such, he reminded me so much of my grandfather. It's such, uh, my, my family from Mexico and Spain or half on my mom's side. And so, yeah, but it was like speaking to my abuelo and I was like, oh my God, this is, it was just so neat to talk to him. And his story is fantastic how he was a surgeon and he had this horrible car accident. And then from there, he decided, went back to the Toltec uh, wisdom and how the healing aspects of that. And so he changed the trajectory of his life. I mean, you don't need me to tell you all that, but he's just f absolutely phenomenal. And I would actually love to have him back on my show. He was going to be for the, the TV show as well. They had Amazing. Well, a while ago, so we'll see. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, I want to ask you the passenger question I mentioned I'd ask you. Yes. And then I just want to ask you one more time about the book, like how people can get it and all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah. So first of all, James, I said that, uh, you know, I have this, show coming up and we haven't even launched yet but i'm gonna ask you're the first person i'm gonna ask this question to it's similar to my time machine question that i think i've asked you on the show what would you tell your younger self uh, yeah but in that same scope uh if you could sit on a plane if you sat down on a plane and you're sitting next to a young kid maybe 18 and you got talking and he said you know i'm just starting my life and i'm trying to figure out how to become successful or how to live a better life or more fulfilled uh, what would you tell me? My question is, what would you tell that younger passenger beside you? What kind of life advice would you give him? I would say the biggest lesson I've learned in my life is don't worry so much. We have the opportunity. There's faith and fear. They ask us to do the same thing. They ask us to believe in something that may or may not come true. When I was a kid, you, we, I'm sure we talked about this as well. There's like a little devil, a little angel. They tell you, they'll talk to you in the, in the cartoons. The same, same concept. To worry so much about something when you don't have enough information, it, all, it be, becomes all consuming. And so to worry about how is this going to work out? How is this going to work out? How is this going to work out? All that energy goes into something that I don't know how it's going to work out. But all I know is I can be consistent and I can be, um, I can be forthright, et cetera. And so the concept for me, what I've learned is don't worry as much because it's good to have a plan. But if you focus so much on the future of what you don't know, you miss out on what's present in the moment. And when that happens, unfortunately, we miss a lot of opportunity. So that's what I would say is don't worry as much. I love it. So my last question then, uh, James, back to uh, what we initially started around is, can you tell us again uh, about the book, you know, what people will get from it, uh, the mm -hmm. name of the book, of course, and where they can get it? I know it's just about to be launched, depending on when they're listening. Uh, so can mm -hmm. you tell us where people can get their copy of the book as well? Of course. Thank you so much once again, Corey. The name of the book is Life Lessons. You are the experts on your life, a workbook. They can purchase it in Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere where books are sold internationally as well. Simply go to lifeologypublishing.com or jamesmillerlifeology.com. The book itself, once again, it's a workbook. It helps you focus on you are the experts, what you've done in the past to help you get over what you're feeling right now. The situation may be different, but your emotions are the same. Done so many things to get over these emotions. I give the framework of how to do that, give you the questions, the prompts to help you reflect on that and allow you to reset and be able to tackle anything that's in your life. Well, James Miller, this has been an absolute pleasure. With your permission, I'm going to call it a To Be Continued because that's I feel like this is nowhere as close to our last interview. So To Be Continued, <laughs> and I might, if you're okay with it, bring you back on after the book's been out a little bit and we'll do a follow-up and see how the book's been going and talk a little bit more about the feedback you've gotten and all that kind of stuff. I would love that. Thank you so much, Corey. I really appreciate your time. Awesome. Thanks so much, James. Uh, there you have it. If you're listening to this as a replay, if you're listening to it when it just dropped, either way, uh, you know about the book. This could be a year from when James and I had this interview. You could be listening to this for the first time, or it could be a day later. Uh, so if you are either way, by the time you're listening to this, the book will be in store. So uh, I should, it'll be in stores, but also you can get it online because most people these days, it seems like want to just grab it online and, and wait for it to arrive. Uh, so grab your copy of James's new book. James, thank you for being who you are. You are a true rock star. Thank you for writing this book. And uh, I can't wait to hear all about how it does. Thank you, Corey. I really appreciate that. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, my friend. Mm -hmm.